So you can see here, this part is the nose. You kind of need to have a few pixels to create that distinction. But once you do, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty stable. Hey pals, welcome to a new video. Today, we will be covering isometric pixel art, particularly isometric characters. This is something that has been suggested that I make a video about pretty frequently since I started doing uh, isometric stuff. And um, since I've been working with isometric characters myself, making Throneless and working on the Ludum Dare entry and experimenting with this whole thing, uh, I thought I would make one. If you haven't been acquainted with this format in the past, then you should watch some of my more recent videos about this topic because I cover some of this information in those videos and uh, it'll just be handy if you started with uh, a tile set before you get into characters. So, assuming you've done that, let's get into it. Okay, so isometric characters. What are the basics? What are the things that you need to know about before we get into it? The thrust of it is that, as we've spoken about many times, uh, this all comes from essentially one studio, you know, heralded this entire sort of aesthetic. Uh, and that studio was Quest, which moved into Squaresoft, now Square Enix, uh, the team that made uh, the game Tactics Ogre, previously Ogre Battle, and then Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, etc. So this is a character sprite from Final Fantasy Tactics, this is Tactics Advance. You can see what's going on here. We've got this very sort of like chibi format. We have uh, these nice big eyes, small feet, particularly smaller feet in uh, the smaller games. So this is a Game Boy Advance game. This is a PlayStation game. And the format has been done a few different times uh, and with different variations. More recently, because the actual historical basis for this stuff, it's not super saturated. There weren't that many games in this format uh, with characters like this. But it's taken more of a, I guess, a popular turn in recent years with, you know, indie developers and, uh, you know, prominent pixel artists in the community. I really love this Age of Empires um, isometric take by Ref, as well as, I, I wish I could pronounce his name, Cyan, Cyan Mao. <laughs> uh, these awesome uh, knights here. You can see that the style is pretty consistent. So small feet, we've got big heads. You could explain that away with perspective. So, you know, the characters are being viewed from the top down, so the head is closer, the feet are further away. This helps kind of enhance that perspective. We've also got games like Witchbrook. I wish I could source this image. I don't know where it comes from, but I really love this character as well. There are a few things almost all of these have in common that comes down to, beyond the proportions, pose work. So there are two major poses. There's the toward, and down, and there is back and away. Now, what I want you to notice here is that if we were just doing a side on character, you can see all of these lines are horizontal. They're parallel with the ground, right? The shoulders are square, you know, the eye line is square, hips are square, feet are square. Once we move into isometric, because we're at a higher angle of elevation looking down, all of these lines follow the ground line and because the character is still facing the ground, they're still square with the ground, this diagonal line appears everywhere, okay? Between the hands, the hips, the shoulders, the eyes, everything follows that same line. And there are two major poses, like I said, towards and away. They have the same angles as well. So once you have these two poses, you can basically just flip them, right? This mirrored version here is the same sort of thing. And that covers all cardinal directions. So you can basically go any direction from here. It is possible, of course, to have games where characters can move in more than these four directions. If your character isn't, strictly speaking, bound to the grid, you might also need to do top-down angles as well, so away, toward, left and right, and those play a little bit closer to just like a normal top-down game, so, so I won't be covering those angles today, uh, I'm just going to be covering these major two. So let's get into it. Hey pals, just quickly, I'm here in post and I thought before we show you the actual character creation, I think it's probably worth showing you my experience doing this and just kind of the things that I've learned while creating characters in this format. So these are the characters that I've been creating in the last little month. These ones were all created in during Ludum Dare. And this was just a quick mock-up that I was doing for the tutorials that I was creating while doing the tile sets. So this is Armin. He is uh, the main character of Insignia. 
And what I really like about this, uh, which came together quite well, although it's hard to see here, is um, just how simple the actual implementation is. There are really only two colors per material. I think this is a actually quite a good choice, um, mostly because these characters being as the size that they are, if you're looking to make a game that's in this sort of tactics ratio, these characters aren't really much taller than say 32 pixels tall. And so I think keeping the amount of things in the character design quite simple keeps them recognizable and um, uncluttered. So in each of these characters, I think that's one thing that I'm getting quite good at um, sort of just being intuitive about, which is just keeping the designs to a minimum. You know, your characters as you create them for, you know, portraits or concept art or whatever, they might have lots of different elements that make up the actual design of the character. But at this scale, these are almost more like chess pieces. That's how I like to think of them. And that's how they present in games like Final Fantasy Tactics. So here, for example, you know, we have our ranger. He has a hood and cape. He has a black tunic and he has brown shoes. Obviously in the game, he's also carrying a bow and each of these characters has their own weapon and that's kind of like part of the silhouette as well. Although here it's not part of the sprite because um, that's just not how it works. Uh, so the goal here was to keep these characters recognizable from both angles uh, and also to use the same color for all of the characters to signify which team they're on because there was a red and a blue team. So we have the ranger, we have the witch. Now I did create these very quickly. I mean, this was the whole thing probably took me like two and a half hours. So just note that it's not uh, probably my finest work, but uh, I think working under those constraints is actually quite a useful thing because it teaches you what you should and shouldn't do. So the first sprite that I created was the knight and I didn't really have a lot of opportunity to do much research on on which elements I should, you know, you know, should stand out and, and be the most salient features. I kind of just was in such a rush that I put together, okay, he's got a breastplate, he's got some pauldrons, he's got some, you know, gauntlets, and he's got boots and that's it. You know, like that's as much as I could do. Throw a cape on there, put a feather on his cap and away we go. Uh, but when I was creating this, you can see how many more colors I'm using. And I think, you know, especially here at the back of this helmet, it really serves to just muddy the sprite. It doesn't really help. And it's more work. It's more pixels that you have to create and be mindful of the, you know, the placing of. So the goal really here is to say as much with as little as possible. That's really how you should do this. The priestess was, I think, one of the last that I created. And I'm quite proud of her. I think she has a few elements that really stand out. You know, she has her, her apron and the, um, you know, the dress that she's wearing. She's got these gold little, I guess, clips in her hair. And that's really like enough, you know, there aren't any more than three colors on any of these materials and it makes her look quite clean compared to say the knight. The knight looks good when it's simple, but you can see in certain areas, you know, it's just noisy, right? So my tip to you is to start simple, try to stay simple and only add when you absolutely have to. So that's my experience. Enjoy watching me create a new character from scratch. Okay, so get yourself over to your favorite pixel art editor. Mine's Aceprite, A-S-E-P-R-I-T-E -E, for those of you who are asking. And uh, basically what I want you to do is create a tile. So start from the bottom corner, drag up. So you've got a nice diamond shape here with uh, two by one angles. And we can come down like this. Okay, there's your, uh, there's your tile. Once you have this tile, it becomes a little clearer about where your character is going to stand and how they're going to stand. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just take another color here on a new layer. And I just want to fill in the silhouette. So let's get the shape right first. Okay, so once we have our base silhouette, we can start filling in a little bit more shading. 
So I want to really emphasize what's on top here because that's kind of the most visible thing. It's very easy to pivot into just doing a side on character where the eyes look like this and suddenly it's not isometric anymore. So just uh, paint the top face as if it's being lit from above. And I usually do light from above anyway, so. And if you're stuck, basically you just want to stick to that rule of following this line here. So anywhere that you want to draw, if you can follow this line across, this down to here, that means the feet are square. Okay, this down to here, that means the hands are square. Same thing with the eyes. That's the angle the eyes are going to be at. So once you've got that basic shape worked out, I want you to refer to your character design. So don't create a character here from scratch unless you know what you're doing. Um, basically, you should have some kind of sketch for what your character looks like, you know, who they are in the game. So I'm going to take a character concept from Insignia and I'm going to see if I can create her in isometric. I might just give her a feet here so we can see that. Um, since it's a female, we might want to change some of these proportions a little bit. Give us some hips. Okay. So now I'm just going to start replacing some colors. So this here is going to be this color. In fact, most of this is going to be red. So I'm just trying to bring in those features of hers, trying to make sure that everything's in there as it's supposed to be. Now with these kinds of characters, the eyes in like the Final Fantasy characters, what they tend to do is be a little bit cross-eyed like that, kind of like the um, characters in Minecraft. So if we have a look here, you can see they've got the irises and pupils dead center. And then either side of that, we have the whites of the eyes. Here with this three quarter view, you can see we don't even have the second pixel. If we go to Tactics Advance, they do have the second pixel on the isometric. So you can kind of play with it until it looks right to you. I like this idea of having a third pixel up because it just kind of makes it look a, a little less derpy. And then you can even do uh, a little bit to darken this off. So you really want the darks of the eyes to be pretty dark. So let's try this. Looking a little better. Now I like to create shapes out of shadows with the face. So we're going to try to make this a little bit bigger. And then what I'll do is this is the nose here. So you can see here, this part is the nose. And you kind of need to have a few pixels to create that distinction. But once you do, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty stable. Nice. Okay, so see how we stuck with that original silhouette and because we established that first, it was pretty easy to morph it into the character that we wanted. And what I was really doing as I'm working through here is I'm picking out the bits and pieces from the character that I think are really important that make them, you know, stand out and unique. So in this case, the proportions of the character, you know, being a, a feminine character means the shoulders aren't quite as broad. We've got uh, the hips here. Uh, are a bit wider, but the waist is a little bit more narrow. So trying to take that and, you know, convert it over without breaking too much. Uh, that's basically the way to go about it. And I'm just going to see how much I can add before I need to start taking stuff away again. So can we get some of that color in to create some depth in the pants? And what I like to do because a sprites uh, background here, tends to be a little bit tricky sometimes. Like, you know, this white square going into this gray square right at this junction where the shoulder is could be a little distracting. So what I tend to do is on a new layer, just, you know, darken it off and see what it looks like under a more flat condition. You know, you can even go straight to black if you want and just test that. So here she looks kind of square. I might just take away these pixels and that helps us out a little bit. Nice. And because this is like a metal, I might, go out of my way to make this a little brighter and we could do a little comparison here. I'm not trying to do, you know, a one-to-one -one copy, but it's nice to just see the differences. 
So I've gone a little bit taller. I quite like that, to be honest. Um, what else has changed? I think we did a pretty good job. I, I quite like what we've come up with here. It's a bit cleaner. It's not as grainy. We could maybe extend this foot out if we want something a little more heroic. If we want it to be a bit of a wider stance, a bit stronger. And of course, the outline will always bring it back into that Final Fantasy Tactics look. So if you really want the outline, it's there for you. And if you do use the Shift O version of the outline, it's always nice to just come back and have a look to see if there's anything you can touch up or that looks a little bit better uh, because it's obviously an automated process and you are, you know, you're going through and creating this by hand. So you might as well just take a critical look at it and just make sure you didn't you know, lose anything. Well, there's no opportunities that you're going to miss out on. So for example, this line here, you know, maybe we actually want this to extend up to further, you know, differentiate the head from the shoulders, you know, if that's what we want. And just working on a little bit more effort here to separate the head from the rest of the body. You really don't want to lose those major components. Okay, so like the head, the torso, the legs, the arms, those need to feel separate. You know, you can even work on adding those internal sort of like outlines to, yeah, further enhance that separation. And it becomes a little bit easier to see now. And I always like to experiment. I mean, these are single pixels here, so we can always play and just see what comes out. So when we added this black line, what it did was it made the feet relative to the waist a little bit further out. So if I bring this back in like this, now it's a little more square. And maybe we'll keep the shoulder pads in as well. Okay, I really like that. I think that's cool. And we can add a little bit more character to the silhouette, I think. Just one of those extra little touches. Awesome. Okay, so that's the first sprite. The next one we want to do is obviously facing the other way. So let's do that next. So the way I've tended to do this is to just take what I made and make it totally symmetrical. This is going to feel a little bit bit mean to just erase major parts of the character but honestly like because this is the same character this pose and this pose are so similar it's just that the the aspects are flipped the stuff that was behind is now in front and everyone everything's turned around so uh, basically you can just take this and flip the um, some of the posture aspects so you can take this and move it a bit closer in you can take this and move it a bit further away. And then you really want to just erase all of the details. You know, you can even fill the head with hair. And that starts to already look like it's from behind. All right, so toward and away. And you just want to bring those major shapes back in. So the more confident you can get with, you know, treating pixels almost like it's clay, I think the faster you'll become. Cool. So you'll notice that a lot of this silhouette from one to the other is pretty similar, right? Especially the arms. And this is something that I don't think is necessarily a problem, um, particularly, you know, for games where this is the case, where you've got characters that can move away from and toward the, the, the player. And particularly when there are a lot of characters on screen, you do want the, the each individual character to have a pretty clear, consistent silhouette. You want the colors to be consistent. You want the shapes to be consistent because it allows the player to very easily recognize who they're looking at. So this is a pretty quick exercise, to be honest. Making a character that's this small shouldn't take you very long. And uh, you can sit here playing for a long time. When I was working on these characters for Throneless, uh, I found myself trying to limit the sprite creation process to about like 10 minutes per sprite. Um, so I, I dedicated, you know, for four or five characters 
I really only spent like two hours working on all of them. That was like towards, away, kneeling sprites. So again, because these characters are so small, you know, it is something where you kind of can create new poses by taking a lot of the information and just copying it for, you know, the next frame. I would just advise that it's probably worth mocking up the character with like a silhouette first, just the blob, maybe like a shaded blobbed character, just so that you know like where the pieces are going before you start copying and pasting elements around. Okay, so as you're working with this, make sure that you don't lose those angles, right? The ones we were talking about before. So you can just always double check if you're a little bit stuck, especially on the hips here. I found it quite difficult to stay and keep this line, but you know, from the shoulders, everywhere. You can basically draw that line and you should be able to draw that and have the bottom of each of those elements line up. And if you're struggling with one area, just do that check to make sure that that's the problem. Cause it could be that, you know, the actual pose is a bit off kilter for other reasons. So there you have it, an isometric pixel art character, both towards and away. You can flip these for the different directions we had our reference here and we uh, came up with this lovely sprite. From here, of course, we could animate these. I won't cover that in this video, but maybe in a future video, we'll do attack animations and walking. I'm currently still knee deep in development on Throneless. Obviously it's only been a week since I started the project. Um, I've made some really good progress and I'll be moving on to character animations soon. So if you are a little bit patient and you wait a couple of weeks, maybe I'll have a video coming up soon with animations for this kind of thing based on my experiences animating my characters for that game. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.